weeks from today, you've got uh, the start of the season. And uh, what has to happen most for this team at this point over these next three weeks to, to be ready for that day? Um, that's, a, that's a good question. That's a deep question. Um, I think there's, you know, we got to continue to see improvement, you know, from really all spots. I don't, I don't think we're a finished product by any stretch. And um, as most teams do the early part of the season, um, you start to find out more about your team. Um, and so those first couple of weeks of the season, you're learning about what kind of team you have every year. Um, and I think every year is, is a new year. And so it's that, that opening month of the season is always uh, very revealing in a lot of ways. Um, but we have a couple of weeks left to continue to get better. Um, we have a lot of work still to do this week. Um, we'll have some situational work we got to focus on at the end of the week because we pick up an extra day in the practice schedule. Uh, but I just think that, that we got to keep kind of our nose to the grindstone and, and keep working, um, keep coaching, keep getting better because that's what the good teams do. And I think that we have a chance to, to be a pretty good team, but uh, we got to keep proving it. Uh, some good. of the guys have mentioned how your practices, the tempo and the speed, is actually faster than the games. Mm -hmm. Is that something that you've done purposely? And if so, who are some of the influences on that? Yeah, I think, you know, the old adage is, and I believe in it, that it's you always want to make the practices um, harder than the game. And I think our practices are hard. I think our guys practice hard. I think the design of the practice is hard. It's meant to be hard. Um, but I think the schedule allows enough recovery and break in between that, that they can come back and do it again when they need to. Um, Part of that is our players; they all practice hard. We got a good, tough-nosed team, and they they inject that into the practice. Um, and so, I think when you get to the game, it does feel easy. And I think that's the point. Um, it feels slower. It feels cleaner. And I think that uh, by design, we try to make it practice a, a challenging uh, a challenging operation. So when they do get to Sundays, that they can they get up and they go, wow, this is this isn't practice is harder than this. Um, and that's the point. So I believe in that. I've I don't know where I've gotten it over the years. I think, you know, we were we did that in Denver. I always thought that um, Peyton ran a pretty demanding practice uh, when we were John Fox as well. We, we practiced really hard. And um, when this when Sunday came, it felt it felt easy. And I think that that does go a long way. John Jackson said that uh, when he first got here and drafted, he sought out each of the three quarterbacks, kind of picked their brains for, you know, tidbits and pointers on the offense. They filled up probably 20 notebooks with with that sort of stuff. How much has his, I guess, attention to detail improved over the course that he's been here? I think he's, I think he was a, had a pros mentality when he came in, uh, which is all those things is, is taking advantage of being able to ask questions and be around veteran players and try to take notes and, and observe. Um, he's, a, he, we joke around him sometimes. He's kind of like, he's like an old man in a, in a young person's body. Um, because he's got this, <clears throat> he's got a real maturity to him. And I think that that's served him really well. And I think that's what's allowed him uh, to improve at the rate that he has is, is that he's, he's very professional in his approach. He, he takes it very seriously. Um, and he's got a maturity level to him that is allowing him to make, I think, gains at a really consistent basis and um, it's because of all those things that he does uh, and he's willing to learn and I think that's a huge part of being a young player is are you willing to learn are you willing to take the advice from the people that are around you uh, take coaching and and can you then apply it and I think he's been able to do all that you were going to share right off the top uh, like you do a lot of times uh, I'm just going to give you guys a quick injury update just so you got the the latest and greatest um, the ones that that, that kind of matter uh, Karis Jackson uh, as it has a knee bruise, essentially, um, it's he's questionable to play in the game Sunday. We'll see how it comes. Those things are, are kind of tricky. They can be uh, pretty painful and they can linger um, or they can come back quickly. So that one's sort of open ended and up in the air. I'll just keep him at week to week for now. Um, Jabari Small is in the concussion protocol. Uh, you likely won't see him this week. Um, there's a long list of things that I got, but the main ones are the main ones. Um, I, I wouldn't, you know, Josh Wiley's still in the protocol as well. Uh, I think he's got a chance to get back this week. Uh, Kyle Phillips with the hamstring, um, probably out this week, but we'll see. Um, after that, that's the that's the main ones. Hopeful to get Stonehouse potentially some work, uh, a punt or two in the game uh, on Sunday. We'll see where that's at, but that's the goal. It's kind of always been our target is to get him back on the field, that last step in the rehab process. Uh, feeling some live action, 
you know, kind of plus 50 punt, let them hold a little bit as well. Um, so that's that's the that's the hope. I can't guarantee that, but we're hopeful to get that. Um, TK McClendon, he's got a turf toe. Um, he's probably going to miss some time, a couple of weeks, I would think. So he was having a nice – he played really well last night, and he got the turf toe injury. Uh, so he, I would expect him to miss some time. Uh, Otis Reese is in the concussion protocol as well. Um, he actually had a really nice game last night as well. He did a nice job. So um, we'll see how, how, how he comes out of that. And – that is the main – those are the main ones. Everybody else um, is, is dealing with their normal stuff, um, but nothing that should be significant. So um, that's where those guys are at. Those are the new ones. And um, that was all I had. How do you plan to maybe approach final preseason game and, and decide who needs work, who doesn't as you add closer to the – season? Uh, my intention as of today, uh, again, that can change as, as these as the week unfolds with the injuries and who's available and all that stuff. Uh, my intent is to play, uh, play the starters, play a significant amount of snaps for a preseason game. I'd like to see our starting offense play, you know, somewhere in the, the three-ish series, um, whatever that might look like. You know, defensively, we have a number of guys that aren't going to play anyway. Obviously, Cheeto and, and Legarius and Jeffrey and Harold won't play, but I'd um, like to see some of those guys that are that didn't play last night play a little bit this week. Um, but again, that's that's fluid at this point, just with you know nicks and bruises and all that stuff. Um, but I would like to play. I'd like our starters to play. I think we need to, and um, I'd like to see a little bit more football because then we'll we'll be off for what amounts to you know close to two weeks before the opener, so um, they won't see the field again playing live football. And I think that we need to play. Practice return. I'm hopeful. Yeah, I'm hopeful. He's he's close. I think uh, I think probably if I had to guess, probably after New Orleans, you might see him back on on the practice field. So again, I'm real real cautious with calves, um, but I think he's getting closer. I'm not changed at all with Hop, or is he still kind of progressing through? He's progressing through. I think his his timeline is kind of what it is, and um, he should be back around here uh, pretty soon this week sometime. And so we'll kind of see where he's at, but. Um, I think the timeline is targeting as he's ready for the opener, um, but we'll see. How difficult to your receiver depth question, considering behind Tyler, it seems like Jackson, Jackson, Phillips, Kinsey are all primary slot. Yeah, we're 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 deep at that spot um, at the slot receiver spot. I do think that Mason Kinsey has uh, the ability to play other spots. He he does have some flex. Um, it's not his primary position or his best position, but he can do the other ones. So can Karras to some degree, you know, because he's got some real, he's got speed. So, and those guys have some flex um, to play other spots. But, but yeah, we're we're deep in in that that room at the at the slot position. So, um, you know, the special teams is a part of it. You know, that's where that's where those guys can separate a little bit. But um, yeah, there's going to be some. Uh, <clears throat> unfortunately, we're going to probably cut some good players at those spots um, just because of of the depth there. You win last week. Depth guys helped you win last night. As a first-year head coach, does the deadline to cut some of those players loom a little bit larger this time around? It always does. You know, this is this will be my first time as as a head coach. Not that I've not been around the cutting process, but um, yeah, it's it's a part that I'm very much not looking forward to, uh, just because of how hard these guys have worked, uh, the amount of effort they've they've given. To, to the coaching staff, to their teammates, um, that part is is really challenging because you appreciate what they've done and how hard they've worked and what they've put on the field. Um, some of them have put pretty nice performances on. And one of the things that I did tell the team the other night was that um, you know the film film is their resume too. You know they're 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 trying out to to make our team. They're trying their best to put their best performance out there for us, but there's 31 teams out there too that are also looking for players and and maybe that their film is good enough that somebody else would like to take a look at them and they didn't fit for us uh, for whatever reason. So uh, it's a challenging part of the year. It's the least, my least favorite part of it because again, we've I've now been around these guys since you know the off season program started and you have relationships and uh, you, you, you build you build the relationships over time and then all of a sudden you got to let them go and that part's, uh, I'm not looking forward to that at all. But um, I do appreciate what those guys have done for us and how hard they've played. It's been really cool to watch. How did you feel about Malik and Mason now that you've had the opportunity to watch them? <clears throat> yeah, they, they both did good things. You know, I, I it's good to see. It's good to see them both be competitive. Um, it's good to see Malik um, have some opportunities to, to play a little more in this game, which was good to see. Um, he, he does some things with his legs that only he can do. 
Uh, he ran for some yards and got out of some trouble that was uh, encouraging. Um, he can really throw it. He put some good throws out there on tape. Uh, Mason shows his veteranness um, when the you know two two minute drives being able to move us in position to score. I think goes a long way for him. That's that's really good to see. Um, he's calm. He's collected. Uh, he makes really good decisions with the ball. And so I thought they both did really good things. Um, and, and I don't really have uh, a lot negative. I think we'll let this thing play out another week. Um, but I think they've both done really good things, both for themselves, just as, as a quarterback play. They've they put some good stuff out there. So uh, encouraged by both of them, really. And I think that, you know, this time next week we'll be able to, to make a decision and determination on, on who the two will be and then what happens with the third spot, you know, if we keep three or if we put practice squad three or if we just go with two. So um, we'll let it go one more week before we dive too far down that road. How much of an advantage is the chance to the emergency quarterback rule this year? Um, it's an advantage to some it, – it's nice to have, um, but you still have to keep – it's still an active roster spot, you know, so it's – you got to make that determination on a week to week basis if you're dealing with injuries or you're you're concerned about it um it is nice to have though i mean to be able to do that is a good thing but you still there's still an active part of that where it's it's not a it's not a free spot which would make it a lot easier if it was just free and you could keep three and it didn't count for your 53 or your 46 but um it still does unfortunately that's the that's the tough part but um it's a good option to have sure if James Williams knows how good he can be at the linebacker position, kind of flashed some more of that potential last night. Do you, I guess, what were the traits that you honed in on when you guys were scouting him that you identified as good enough to be a, a contributor yeah. in the league? And what does he need to do to be a rotational guy in that way? I think got to give a lot of credit to the, you know, to, to the scouting staff and then our defensive coaches that evaluated him too. They, they felt like, um, he had the traits to move into the box and, and play linebacker. Um, obviously, had some development to go, but um, to have the foresight in the in the scouting process to recognize that and see it, um, and then you know you take a seventh round pick on a guy that's got developmental potential. It's exactly what you want to do with those picks, and um, so really well done on the scouting staff and and by our coaching staff to agree on that they f saw something in him worth uh, investing in. Uh, he's just the the thing for him is he's he's got to learn. He he does things really really fast in practice, and he looks does a lot of really great stuff. And then things he slows in the game a little bit, and so it's more just getting comfortable playing, you know, with your eyes as a linebacker in the box. It's it's a different style than even when a safety does when they're down in the box. So um, that development will be key for him. But he's come a long way in a really short amount of time. I think uh, Frank Bush, uh, uh, we're lucky to have Frank. I think Frank's is 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 an elite linebacker coach, and I think you see that by how those guys have developed and played. And so. Um, I think Frank's a huge part of that developmental process, and and James is really taken to it. So, not a, obviously a long way to go for him, but but a lot of potential, um, I think, to be a, a really good inside linebacker. On the topic of linebacker, Cedric Gray is somebody that a lot of fans had high mm -hmm. hopes for. He's been you know, injured and not around. Is yep. he at risk of falling too far behind in this process? What do you make of him so far? Um, yeah, it's not good when you miss that amount of time. You know, it's it, can you make up the ground? Sure, it's not impossible. Um, but yeah, there's, there's a, there's a point where, you know, you'd like to see, you, you got to get out there and play. And, um, I think one of Cedric's strengths is that he's instinctive and just playing football is something that he's good at and to not been to miss two opportunities in the preseason to see that, um, I think is, is tough for him. The injury, you can't do anything about the injury. It's not his fault. Um, but yeah, it's, that's just the nature of, of training camp and the nature of football is that sometimes an injury can hold you back and, and the guys like James and Chance are getting a lot of opportunities to show that, that they're up to the task as well. So, um, I wish I wish we had a chance to look at him, but that's just the nature of it. You talked a little bit about the development of David Martin Robinson and the possibility of four tight ends, mm -hmm. but how hard is four tight ends when eleven personnel is what you're running a lot of the time? Yeah, I mean we're we're we'll we'll run a lot of eleven personnel, but we have plenty in the in the twelve and thirteen world that that we've uh, have part of our package, and so I would say that for us just. You'll get to talk to Rand, I think, at some point here after the cut down. But the philosophy from the end of the back of the roster that that you know those last six seven spots um, is going to be less about checking the box that we have a fifth safety or a fourth tight end or whatever those numbers are going to be, um, and just finding the best players uh, regardless of the position. And so um, we're trying to make sure that we don't lose a player that we think could be really good just because we need to check a box on a number. Um, and we're trying to make sure that, that we do the right job evaluating those players. And so 
I don't think it'll be hard to keep four tight ends if that's what we decide to do, um, because I think if if we do that, then uh, that that player will have earned that roster spot. He's worthy of of the fifty three spot. A guy like that, you know, you want to. You, you said the tape is an audition for everybody, but you want to evaluate them. How do you balance like trying to make sure you get that evaluation, but also tucking them away so other teams may not? It's always a tricky battle. Um, but I think mo more importantly is, is we want to see them play. And especially for some of those guys that you can't simulate it in practice. They need to, you need to see what live reps look like. And um, I think what happens is that the cut down a lot of times is I've been a part of this enough years that you look at your own players and you think, oh, man, I, I somebody will claim them. But then you realize that everybody else has those players on their roster, too, that they feel about it. So a lot of the times when you think that someone's going to get claimed by another team, you got to remind them that it's, they've got to be claimed to an active roster. So they're making a 53 with a player that hasn't been there for the last six months. Um, not that it's impossible, but it just most of the time it usually ends up the other way where everyone's trying to keep their own players um, and so it can be a delicate balance because you need to see the game reps, you need to see them play. Um, but I think everyone else has those same people that they're watching in the same roles. And so you always want to make sure you got the evaluation right first before you decide to hide a player. How's it, how, go ahead, Nick. How does Elijah handle the situation of bringing in some of the other safeties? And is there any consideration to get him some reps at the corner with his experience there, or do you still be on the top? I don't, I don't see Elijah as a, as a corner. Um, I know he's played some nickel, you know, in the, in the past. Um, but I think he responded like all pros do. You know, there's the competition's welcome. Um, guys are confident and they want to compete. I think competition makes the position groups better. Um, so yeah, he's he's handled it well. Obviously, you know, anytime you're a player and you're bringing in two guys in your position, you you know you're you probably have some internal feelings about that. But um, he's handled it as as good as you could ask. And I think he stepped up his play. I thought he's really actually improved and played better in um, the last two weeks, which has been good to see. So. Uh, I don't think it's been an, an issue. I think that's just life in the NFL. You know, you're always trying to improve your roster and bring in better players. And uh, we just so happen to bring two in at the same spot. And, and he's competed well and shown well for himself. So um, no real complaints about Elijah in that regard. Still in competition mode, I guess, at right guard and right tackle. Is anybody kind of trending in the right direction there? Yeah, I think that I think they're trend. I think what you what you see with our starting group, which was was. Um, Dylan and, and Nick uh, are trending in the direction as being the starters. Um, it's not over yet for sure, but um, those guys have, have performed well enough at that point. Um, the moment we walk out with the starters against New Orleans, those guys will be the guys that are starting uh, this this week. So, um, again, I reserve all right to, to pull the plug on that one if I so choose to. But as of right now, those guys have, have been the guys that have played the best. Surprised by how quickly Jalen Harrell has come along, and maybe what's the next step for somebody like him to contribute early? Yeah, surprised? Um, no, I'm not surprised. Um, you know, he comes from he he played in a in a similar style of defense, so and he's been he's been coached. He came from a, a blue blood program. Um, those guys tend to show up. You know, they just they play in big games. They played in uh, winning programs. They know what it takes. Uh, so we've seen all that, and then he plays a physical brand of football in college and it turns out he plays a physical brand of football here um, he's been really really good in the run I think he's developing as a rusher he's shown up he's got production on the quarterback um, but he's he's learning how to rush the NFL way which I think is is he's going to improve rapidly in that way too um, but he's he's risen I mean he is, is is a seventh round pick that you know nobody thought much of to to be in probably a, a pretty strong rotational player for us um it's been good to see. When did, when, when did you know you were going to get nervous in, uh, last night? And, and pretty cool to see him overcome what he was dealing with to be able to. Yeah, yeah, he wasn't supposed to play. I don't know if he said that or not, but yeah, he was he was sick all morning. Um, kind of sent him sent him back to go lay down, and he just wasn't feeling very good. And uh, Todd was like, "Yeah, I think we can get him to the game. I think he'll he'll be able to manage it, and we should be fine." And uh, and then for him to go out there and. and bomb a 59 yarder and kick the game winner uh was was pretty cool to see um he's he's been great I mean he's he's had you can see his talent as a kicker which has been cool and um and you saw obviously the strength that he's got in his leg it's a, a real 59 yards is is no joke I think somebody from Dallas wasn't like what 60 something last night um which is crazy but um yeah I just think he's I think he's a young talented kicker and I think those guys you see a lot of times, you know, it takes these kickers, you know, two, three years to kind of find their find their way, and then they, they kick to their 40, you know. Um, 
but it's, it was good to see. He's, he's been competitive. Uh, he's done some really nice things for us in practice. And so for him to show for himself like that, just, just happy for him as, you know, personally to put that on tape for the world to see is, is really cool. Occasion from the last night you mentioned uh, Traylon and Nick playing different positions. Is that just Traylon's primarily going to be the X in NWI, mostly at Z? Primarily, yeah. I think NWI's got a lot of flex. He can he really can play all spots. Um, but with D Hop hurt and the timeline with him pushing up to the first game and Traylon playing in that in D Hop spot at the X, um, that was really the biggest consensus for him to not play in that game. Is that we're already down one at that spot. Um, and Nick's just so versatile. He does a little bit of everything uh, pretty dang well. And so, um, you know, just by nature, we just need enough, hadn't had, had to have enough bodies to play. Um, and so that was part of it. But yeah, Nick's, Nick is primarily a Z, but he can play inside and he can play X. And Trey's is focused most of his efforts on playing X. You asked the league two, two weeks away now to, to speed up clarification on Arden. <laughs> I, I mean, they, they do what they do at their pace, unfortunately. Um, yeah, we've you know you you need clarity on those situations. Certainly, with the cuts coming in a week, um, what that looks like. So yeah, we'd like to get some clarity as soon as possible. Uh, at center, and maybe how much has he helped his value being a guy who can do a couple of things for you? Yeah, he's been fantastic. Um, I think you see his veteranness, uh, the way he communicated in the game, both on the field and on the sideline, was with those young players that were with him was outstanding. Um, He's just a he's just a crafty veteran offensive lineman. Uh, he can play guard. He can play center. Uh, he's a great communicator. He's incredibly intelligent, uh, which goes a long way for that center spot. But versatility is always the name of the game. If you want to play for a long time in this league, you got to be able to do a little bit of everything. And his ability to play center, I think, has really uh, helped him. And he's gonna, you know, he's a very reliable, consistent backup. And then those are guys that you need. And he's obviously started multiple years in this league, um, and certainly would feel good about him starting for us if that uh, was the case. But then he's been great. I, I've really got nothing but fantastic things to say about Dan and and his leadership in that room and uh, his ability to help us. I think we're gonna we need everybody on on your roster over the course of the season, and, and to have a guy like Dan on it is really pretty important. Thanks, Thanks, Thank you. Appreciate it.